Hi, good people. Today we're going to be working on setting up some projectile code. So we have this simple little scene with my archer. So I want to spawn some arrows so we can uh, basically shoot them out. To do that, let's uh, actually set up a new scene. We're going to choose other node. And I'm going to do an area 2D. We'll hit create. It's going to give you an error message saying it has no collision. So we'll right click, add a child. Search for collision shape 2D. Hit create. And then we're gonna get a warning that we have to define the shape. If you go to the inspector, click on shape, I'm gonna choose a circle shape 2D, and then you can see it's setting up right here. I'm gonna right click on the root node, and I'm gonna add a sprite 2D, hit create. And then in the texture field in the inspector for the sprite, I'm gonna load in a picture of an arrow. I have this little 32 by 32 right here. And there's my arrow. My collision shape's a little too big, so I'm gonna select that, make sure I'm in arrow select. Then you can click on the point, bring down the radius. And this is just so the tip of the arrow can actually go through the object before we run the code. Um, I'm gonna right click on the root node, and then I'm gonna add another uh, final node. And this one's gonna be the visible on-screen notifier 2D. So we're gonna hit create on that. And that's going to let us basically detect when the arrow leaves the visible uh, screen. Let's go back to the area 2D, right click and attach a script. And then we're going to browse and I'm going to call this my arrow script. And then I'll hit create. I'm going to delete all this code here. Uh, I'm going to add two variables. I'm going to designate one with an export. I'm going to call it speed. I'm going to typecast it as uh, an int and set it equal to 200. When you use the export designation in the inspector, it should show up as a changeable value. Just makes it easier to prototype. The uh, second one I'm going to define is direction. I don't have a value to enter, but I can typecast it as a vector too. And then there's a few different functions we can use. We can use process or we can use physics. For this example, I'm going to continue with the physics process, so just make it easy. Uh, we're going to set direction equal to a vector2. We can come into the right vector, call the rotated method, and then pass in our rotation. I'll explain what that does in a second. We can then define our global position as equal to the global position plus the direction times the speed times the delta. Let's hit F6, save our scene as arrow, and we should see an arrow traversing across the screen, and you can see it at the top right here. Now, what this code does is it allows us to take in whatever rotation the arrow has, and then go straight from there. Uh, it's easier if I demonstrate that. I can select the area 2D node, and then under transform, I can give it a random rotation. And then when I play the scene, it should shoot along that curve and then exit the screen. Now we need a way to detect when this thing hits an object such as a wall or an enemy, or if it doesn't hit anything at all. Um, so there's three ways and we can set that up. Um, the first way is if we select the uh, area 2D, click on node, I have an area entered. So I'm going to double click and hit connect. Uh, and that's going to give me my first function. The second one is if I go back to area, I have um, body entered. So I'll double click and connect that into uh, my script. And now I have my area entered and my body entered. Now I'm going to click on the visible screen notifier. I'm going to double click on screen exited. And then I'm going to connect that function. So now I have three methods to detect when the arrow hits like a wall, an enemy, or if it doesn't hit anything at all. Let's define some code on what we want the arrow to do when it hits something. Um, I'm going to create a destroy function that just calls Q free. So when we hit an area, which is typically used for like an object, like a border tile or something, uh, we can print and pass in the area that we hit so we know what we hit and then we can call uh, destroy and then for the on bodied entered we can print 
the body that it hits, and then we can call destroy. And then for the, uh, when it leaves the screen, we can just simply print I left, and then we can call destroy. Uh, we're probably gonna add code here later, but we're just gonna keep it short and simple for now. But let's see how this works. So I've hit F6. If this thing hits an object, it should basically destroy, or if it leaves the screen, it should play something right here that I left, and then it frees up and cues and basically destroys the actor. So uh, that is working perfectly. Um, so with the arrow created, I am gonna make a few more adjustments. Let's first reset our rotation. Uh, the other thing we'll wanna make a note of is collision. I'm gonna leave it alone right now, but I'll call it out just so you can see we're gonna run into an issue with it basically. Um, let's go to the uh, our scene code and hit our script. And we're gonna actually come into the player and uh, set up the code to where we can actually trigger this thing. Uh, we're first gonna need to be able to get a variable. Um, the variable we need is that arrow. The way we do that is we can call export and we can call, actually I'm gonna call it ref arrow. You can set that uh, to a pack scene, and then you can set that equal to the preload. And then if you go down to your scenes uh, from your file system, you can actually drag in your arrow and it'll make the reference for you. And this works perfectly fine. Another way to write this code, which I prefer, is actually getting rid of this and just leaving it as a pack scene. And then in the inspector, you'll have a uh, uh, the reference arrow or the variable show up here, and then you can just use the GUI, and then you can load in uh, your arrow scene that way. So either way works, whatever you prefer. Uh, I'm also gonna create another variable um, called is attacking. I'm gonna set it as a bool and set it equal to false. That's not gonna be important for actually shooting the arrow. It's mainly gonna be used for when we're switching animations. So we'll just create it now and uh, we'll set it up a little bit later. Uh, and then we wanna create a function to actually shoot the arrow. So we can say function shoot arrow. And then we'll just print uh, shot arrow. And then we need a way to capture a player's input um, to actually initiate uh, shooting of the arrow. The way we can do that is we can come to project, project settings. We'll define a new action. We'll call it attack. We'll hit add. And then we're gonna add a button to it. And I'm just gonna use my left mouse click and then click okay. And then this is pretty much it. I can then hit close. And then I'm using a physics process for my frame code here. So I'm gonna expand that out. And after the uh, input damage, which is a debug code I was using, I'm gonna call into another input. Uh, is action just pressed, I'll call that method. And then we can call the, whatever you named the uh, button press, which in my case I used attack. Um, and then once I have uh, the attack button pressed, I can basically come into a, um, sorry, shoot arrow, I think is what I called it. So now if I press F6 to play this, no arrow is gonna come out, but it should say I shot an arrow. And you can see that in the uh, debugger at the bottom. So now we need to figure out how to actually spawn this thing. So let's uh, go ahead and do a if check. So we'll do if uh, ref arrow is true, basically does it exist. We'll create a new variable called arrow, set it equal to the ref arrow instantiated. We can then call get tree, set it to the current scene, and then I believe it's add child dot add child and then we'll call arrow. 
All right, let's see. Get tree current scene dot add child arrow. I'm basically adding this uh, variable to the uh, root component of the character body. So that looks right. Then we can get the um, arrow and set the global position equal to self dot global position. Uh, the reference to self in this case is optional, but it does make your code a little bit more readable. Um, it's basically talking about the character body because that's where the script's attached to. So basically the arrows global position will be equal to the character body's global position. And then from there, we need to get a rotation. So we can say variable arrow rotation is equal to a reference to self global position. We need to get a direction to, and for this one, we could probably get a global mouse position. So basically wherever your mouse is, wherever you're clicking. And then we'll just get the radian angle of that. And then we can pass the arrow dot rotation set equal to literal arrow rotation. And then with that code, we should run into an issue here. And you can see the arrow is spawning, but I'm running into my body. And that has to do with the collision we set up earlier on the actual arrow. So if we come into the 2D scene, expand out our collision option for the root node, we're on layer one, mask one. Uh, the arrows in this case are gonna be used mainly for enemies. So I'll put enemies on layer two. So I'm gonna mask um, layer two for the arrow. So the arrow is basically gonna be looking for uh, mask two, which will be where the enemies are. And I'm also gonna place the arrow on layer two so it doesn't uh, interact with any other checks that the player is doing. So just to make it easier. Um, and now if we replay the scene, I should hopefully be able to shoot an arrow in all directions. It looks like that's working pretty okay. Now the next thing you might want to do is actually add an animation to this uh, design. You have to change up the code a little bit, so I'll show you what that looks like. Um, I'm running a little bit long, but we'll see if we can get it done. Let's add a. I'll go ahead and delete this. Start from scratch. We'll add a um, new animation. We'll call it attacking. And then I'm going to import a sprite sheet uh, for attack. My sprite is 100 by 100. And I will select all, add the frames. I'm going to set it to 12 FPS, loop off, and that looks good. Go back to the script, and I need to change this around a bit. Um, when we press the attack button, we have a reference to sprite. And if you remember in the previous vid, the sprite is equal to the animated component. So it's basically this thing right here. So I can say sprite.play, because it's an animation component, and we call the animation attacking. Um, we will also want to set is attacking equal to true. And then I'm gonna leave the shoot arrow alone here for now. Um, but there's going to be a problem with this. So if we play it, you notice that the animation is starting to play and then it stops. And that's because the, uh, the tick frame just happens so quickly that the animation can't finish. It could just barely start before it gets interrupted. So we need to use this is attacking Boolean to actually, uh, halt that behavior. Um, so what we'll do is on the sprite code, which is all this stuff right here, this handles the, the walking, the idling, the flipping. What we can do is just tab it over and then we will call into uh, an if check uh, is attacking. So if is attacking is uh, not true, then you can move. If is attacking is true, then don't. Which also means we need to take this put it above oops, our actual play. Now this will set the is attacking to true, but we have no way to set it back. 
the way we can set it back is we can just click on the animated sprite component, go to the node tree, there's a node for animation finish. We'll just double click, hit connect, and when this thing finishes, we can say is attacking is equal to false. So now we have a back and forth check. Now this is still not gonna work, um, and I'll kind of show you why. So you can kind of see it shoots the arrow first and then it plays the animation, which is not what, not what we want. Doesn't really look very good. The way to fix that is you have to move where we shoot the arrow. So we can probably delete it from here. So we'll push the button, we'll play the animation. When the animation is done, we'll set this to be false and then we will shoot the arrow. And then if we play that, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be good enough for I think this prototype. If you wanted to basically get it absolutely perfect, there is a node in the animated component where it was like animation changed or animation sprite frame. Uh, so I think you can actually get what literal frame your animation is on and then do it from there. But I think this is pretty fine for what we're going for. Hope you enjoyed the vid.